coat on there? Mm, got it. Uh, again, thanks for joining today. A um, little bit about Purdue. Obviously, a tough, tough loss for us. Um, give Purdue credit. A really good team, well coached. Um, the one thing I can say about the game before I really talk about you know, us is you know, the environment that was created at the Shell in the shell last week was something that our players were really, really excited to see. And I know that, you know, they stayed for four quarters. We knew it would be a four quarter game, a tough game, but to be able to create that, create that type of environment was something that was very welcoming for us as a team and as a football program. And we just asked that our fans continue to support that way. And, and we look forward to continuing to work to put a product on the field that they can uh, be really proud of. You know, when you, you think about the Purdue game and, and we've kind of flushed it which this one was a little tougher because, as I said on Saturday after the game, there were some things within that game that we had control of as a program and as a football team that we didn't take care of. And that goes down to, comes down to execution. Uh, Purdue executed at a higher level than we did. And, you know, for me, it's our jobs as coaches to get our players to understand that when you play tough games, it comes down to being able to execute and you never know which play is going to make a difference in the outcome of the game. And we've had some opportunities in that game to, to really put the game away, and we didn't execute at a high enough level. Um, the good thing is nobody in the locker room had their heads down. Um, obviously, they're disappointed, but there were no finger pointing. We all know there's a lot of football left to be played. There were some positives that come out of a game like that. You know, we, we use the mantra that you don't lose, you learn. And you know, for us, it's just really important that when we have opportunities, our defense created three takeaways and we got zero points out of it. Uh, we needed to get off the field on defense and that last drive and we left a guy open. Those are all things that we can control. And as a coaching staff, we've, we're working to get all those things corrected quickly. Uh, the penalties uh, in opportune times kept a couple plays or a couple drives alive for those guys. And you know, for us, again, that goes back to Terps versus Terps and we'll continue to work through. Um, we got Indiana. On the road, Big Ten game, uh, Tom Allen, we've had a chance to, I've had a personally a chance to go against his defenses and Tom uh, since his days at South Florida as a D coordinator, um, where we played him a couple of times here. Um, saw him obviously as the D coordinator at Indiana. Has done a really good job of, of building a foundation at Indiana. I know he's battled some injuries. They've battled some injuries this year, uh, but still a, a quality opponent that uh, has our attention. Um, you know, when you look at them on offense, uh, Walt Bells, their offensive coordinator, who people here are very familiar with, they play a fast, up paced tempo offense that they try to get a bunch of plays. I think they're fourth in the country or fourth in the nation in tempo, which means they're getting over 80 plays a game. They've had a couple of games where they've had over 100 plays. And so for us, uh, we've got to do a really good job on the defensive side of the ball of getting ourselves lined up, really good job of communicating and making sure that we got everybody on the same page as they try to play fast. Um, on defense, you know, they're heavy blitz team. They're a team that's going to attack our quarterback. You know, about 60% of the snaps in normal down and distance are pressure. And that's six and five and six and seven man pressures, which uh, we've got to be able to handle with poise and confidence and make sure that we are very sound in our protections and, and, and able to execute versus uh, the type of pressure we'll see, which is will be one of the most uh, the teams that has pressured the most of, of that we've had a chance to face. Um, I know Coach Allen will have his team ready. We're working. We're back uh, working this week to, to get ourselves back on the right track, and we're looking forward to this opportunity. Um, the captains for this game, Jahari Branch, Mosiah uh, Nasili Kite, and Chad Ryden will represent us as our game captains going into Indiana. With that, open it up for questions. Oh, what's going on, Coach? Brian, what's up? Uh, nothing much. Uh, you spent uh, last on Saturday, you mentioned a little bit about Deshaun Barham being a natural prep pass rusher. I was wondering, could you go into a little bit more detail on what makes him such a, a solid pass rusher? Well, I think the, the biggest thing with the ability to get after the passer is natural get off or first step quickness. Um, you know, he's a big, long guy. He's 6'3, 235 ish, but has really short area quickness, really good short area quickness. And when you take a guy like him from the second level and you put him down like we did in our Don Rabbits, uh, opportunities last week and the last few weeks, um, just his first step quickness and his ability to, as we say, get skinny uh, on, on the big tackles, it becomes kind of a matchup issue, but mostly the first step quickness, the twitch, and just his tenacity. I mean, this guy 
plays the game kind of old school way. He loves uh, attacking, getting to the football, finished on the quarterback really well, and, and we'll continue to try to create those opportunities for him. And just to follow up on that, uh, when you recruited him out of, out of high school, would he experience show like showcase the ability that he can come into come into Maryland as a freshman and make the immediate impact he has he has so far? Yeah, I mean, typically what it starts with is does he have the phys physical traits to be able to play early? Uh, 6'3", 235 pound, true freshman. He got here early, was here for spring ball, which adds the ability to, to, to help us earlier because of the time he spends going through spring practices. But there's no doubt we recruited him to come in and play. We knew he'd have that type of impact on our defense. Um, coach, with Indiana changing offensive line coaches right before this game, does that make preparation for this any trickier than usual, or is it not like I mean, position coach? I mean, it doesn't because, you know, with the offensive coordinator's philosophy, what they do is what they do, if anything, from a, from a fundamental standpoint or philosophical standpoint of the position group. You know, those things may change how they set, um, what, what protections they want to show this week. I'm sure, you know, I know Rod Carey very well, spent time at Temple. Uh, Northern Illinois, and he was right there as a, a quality control guy that got moved up. But, I mean, it's tough to, to have that type of impact in, you know, this short a period of time in terms of what's able to change. I'm sure he'll have some suggestions, and but what, what they do on offense is kind of what they do. Hey, Coach. Uh, how pleased are you with the production of the tight end room? Um, has it surprised you a little bit, given the production you guys lost from Chig last year? Um, definitely love what I've seen from them in the past uh, game. Um, the run game, we're still a work in progress there with the, the, the type of bodies we have. You know, CJ is more of a guy that has the ability to help us control the C area, as we like to call it, whereas Corey is more of a hybrid guy, um, more of a second level blocker for us. Um, but both those guys are really talented in the passing game. Corey, with his you know, his skill set kind of creates a mismatch issues where if you decide to play him with a, uh, a DB, we can go in line and run the ball. If they decide to play him with the linebacker, it creates that matchup for him in space as a route runner. Um, but not surprised because both of their skill sets, we recruited them here to do these things. And tight ends have typically been a big part of what we do because of the matchups they create. Um, hi, Coach. What does the so, offensive line have to do to have success against a blitz-heavy team on the road? It starts with communication up front. You know, our center, Jahari Branch, got to get the right calls and get, get us all on the same page. Uh, our quarterback has to do a really good job of identifying the safety structures to find out where it's coming from, which typically is just, you know, where's the overload pressure coming from. Um, we've done a pretty good job of protecting our quarterback for the most part, but with the amount of pressure we expect to see out of this Indiana group, we've just got to make sure we're all on the same page and the communication is correct. Hey, Coach, uh, analytics, all right? My first question is, do you have, do we have an analytic department? And I ask this because- Department? I, I, know, I know it's you, ultimately, but I know, you know, Harbaugh talks about it a lot, uh, our coach, John, at uh, the Ravens, and uh, he's got somebody in his ear saying, go, don't go, but, you know, now it's being questioned a little bit. And it's becoming such a big part of football with all the one-point games and the you have decisions to make. Is that solely on you, or, or are you hearing it from somebody in the box saying the numbers say to do this? I'm just curious. It's hard to fire a computer or, or a group, so I, I would imagine it's solely on me, the decisions that we make. Um, like anything, do we utilize resources that are available to us? Yeah, we've uh, worked with a company, CAI that I actually introduced down to Alabama when I was in a role, uh, off the field role, that uh, runs, as they say, the sim simulations of our game and gives us this big book. And there's a guy that last year was Coach Ray stood beside me this year. It's a, a Matt who, uh, Konopesky, who stands beside me, has the analytics book that gives us suggestions. I mean, some people make suggestions, others make decisions, and so, yeah, we hear the suggestions, when the kick, like I, I was supposed to go for it on the field goal that we missed this week. It was a fourth and three situation and the analytics say it, go for it, go for it. Uh, I, I got a good kicker and I used the human element part of it. Didn't work out, 
they sent me a little note saying, hey, probably should have went for it because the percentage of making that kick versus the percentage of converting fourth and three, it was higher to com the fourth and three conversion. But you have to use your the human element, in-game uh, decision making. Um, but I think everyone is using some form of analytics. It's definitely a great tool, but I, I don't think I'll ever be able to come in and stand in front of you guys and say, well, the analytics told me to do this and you guys not just get after me for it. Hey, Coach, your team's starting to generate some success with turnovers this season. What's been the biggest difference you've seen there, and how do you start to you know, capitalize on those? You know, con turnovers are contagious. It just kind of happens that way. Once you start getting them, um, it happens a lot. It happened here Saturday, and that, to me, was the disappointing thing. We didn't take advantage of them with the offensive uh, field position that we had. Um, our defense has done a good job. We emphasize it during practice. We spend 10 minutes in each practice where we just work on the turnover circuit. Uh, and we've done it since I've been here. And so uh, hopefully it's uh, something that will become contagious. We can keep that keep that going because turnovers, big plays are still the, the two key uh, ingredients to winning. And uh, you know we created some last week and we need to take advantage of them when we, when we get them. Uh, Coach, I got another Jay Sean Barkham question for you. <laughs> um, you doing a story on Jay Sean this week? Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> um, but uh, I wanted to ask: when talking to other players, they mentioned uh, he doesn't he doesn't play like a freshman. He doesn't act like a freshman. I was wondering, could you go into detail, like what makes him appear well beyond his years outside of his his, his physicality? If you ever have a chance to talk to him, which you won't get until next year, because freshmen don't talk to the media. Um, Jay Sean is like a robot. Like, I don't even think he has emotions. Like, if you ever see him, he will deadpan face you, answer questions. He doesn't get overly excited, overly low. He's just, <laughs> he's pretty consistent, almost to where it's funny because you're talking to him and you give just a deadpan look. So I think what that does is leads him to where there's nothing too big for him. Um, when you come in as a freshman, you're playing against some of the top teams in the country that we get to face as a Big Ten uh, member. The lights aren't too big. He doesn't get overly excited. Nothing kind of, you know, pushes his buttons. He just he's really, really consistent with his habits and behaviors, how he prepares, how he plays, um, and it shows in, in terms of the, the production he's had as a young player. Hey, Coach, how are you? Hey, Verona. Good to see you, man. Wanted to ask about the safety duo you've got back there, Bo and Dante. How have you felt about the way they've gelled together this season so far? Uh, they, they're a work in progress. And, you know, two young players that, you know, Bo has played quite a bit over the last three years, some. Um, Dante played quite a bit or some meaningful minutes last year behind two really good safeties that we lost. But they both have taken on the leadership role as young players. Um, they both are really working hard to be the ones that get us lined up correctly and get the communication the way it needs to be. Uh, still a work in progress, though. They have good days, bad days, like you tend to get with uh, young players, the inconsistency. And we're just trying to get more consistent than we do the inconsistent. When you see those good days, what is leading to those? What are they doing you know, throughout the week before the big game? Their preparation. These guys live in the office, watch a bunch of tape. They're always with Coach Neighbors, who has really been a, a great a great asset to uh, great for these young players because he understands this uh, the scheme we run. Um, they spend quite a bit of time watching film and studying it, and up in Coach Neighbor's office asking all the right questions because they've become the, they've become the quarterbacks of our defense. Coach Dequan Bennett, another good game with the pass breakups. He got that interception. Just what have you seen from him throughout the whole season? You know, he's gotten back to where he's playing the ball the way it should be played. I know there were a couple games after the first game where he panicked a couple times in coverage where he was in great position but didn't become the receiver mindset. And I think, you know, what we've tried to work on with him coming back for this extra year was when that ball's in the air, you have to think and become a receiver. And the DBs, they get the interceptions across the board, typically have great ball skills. And he has the ball skills to make the play. It's just a matter of the mindset, whereas a DB is looking to break it up, a receiver is thinking he's going to catch it. And uh, it was good to see him be able to make some of the plays he made this weekend when we needed him. Hello, Coach. Hey, buddy. Hey, um, 
is there any plan to get Antoine Littleton started, like, going again against Indiana this week? It seemed like against Michigan State, he played really good. You know, he only got 16 or two points. Yeah. I mean, we got a lot of talented backs, and they all kind of do certain things really well. We love to, I'd love to have Antoine get 20, 25 touches. Um, we've got to execute on third down. We've got to be able to extend some drives. Um, but he's definitely a, a guy that we try to get involved um, when we're capable of doing that. And there's no doubt that he has the talent to help us. Uh, Coach, si similar to what, for what you were saying about Jay Sean Rack mentioned going into Michigan, not getting you know too high because you know teams like that recruited him. Um, is bringing in guys like like those two, you know, could, does that sort of filter down and it's staying neutral and not getting too high or too low for the first couple stretch of the season? Yeah, um, I, that's tough for me to, to – you probably got to ask those guys when you get the opportunity to. But our program is built, and we, we, we try to encourage and, and instill in our players part of our DNA is to, to, to stay at neutral, to not – you know, it's good to play with emotion but not be emotional, and that's the key. Um, you know, both those guys, both, you know, Rock, Jay, Sean, these guys were recruited, like you said, by everybody in the country. So I don't think who we play kind of dictates how they feel emotionally from that standpoint. But we really try hard to focus on the four to six seconds that a play lasts, give it our undivided attention, with the, play it to the, the best of our ability, and then that play dies, get to the next play right away. If you do that, you don't have a lot of time to become very emotional. So that's kind of how we try to develop our players to think as we play games. Thanks, guys.